Welcome to lecture number 26 on measure and integration. Uh, we have been uh, studying the properties of uh, the product measure spaces. We defined what is the uh, product of two measure spaces and then uh, we started looking at the problem of um, how to compute the measure of uh, an element E in the product sigma algebra. So, we will continue that uh, study in the today's lecture. So, today's lecture the main aim is going to be computing the product measure. So, let us just recall that given a sigma finite measure space is x a mu and y b nu, we had defined the product measure space namely x cross y and the sigma algebra on x cross y is a times b which is the sigma algebra generated by all measurable rectangles that is sets of the type E cross F, where E belongs to A and F belongs to B. And the mu cross nu is extension of the measure, uh, which is defined on rectangles by the property that mu cross nu of a rectangle E cross F is mu E times nu of F. And then via outer measures, we extend that uh, to the sigma algebra uh, A cross B. So, the problem we wanted to analyze was that given a set E in the product sigma algebra A times B, how do we compute uh, the product measure mu cross nu of E? Because uh, at present we only know that uh, mu cross nu is defined on the sigma algebra A times B via the extension theory. So, to do that, we had said that we should try to look at what are called the sections of the set E. So, let us recall what is called the section. So, for a point element x in E, E lower x. So, this is a notation used for the set of all points y. Uh, uh, this is not r, this should be uh, in y. So, all the points y in y say that x comma y belongs to E. And similarly, we can define the section uh, with respect to a point y in y. So, the main questions uh, we had formulated in the previous lecture were, can we say that this section uh, is a element in the sigma algebra B on, this is a subset of y. So, is it um, an element in the sigma algebra B? If yes, then we can define nu of E x, which depends on x. So, I get, we get a function x going to nu of E x. So, the question is, is that a measurable function as a function of x? If it is measurable, we can define its integral with respect to mu and then ask whether that is equal to the product measure eta of E. So, and similarly, can we interchange the role of x and y? So, these are the questions we want to analyze. If that it turns out to be true, then this will give us the way of computing the product measure of a set E by looking at the sections, taking the new measure and then adding up or integrating and similarly the other way around. So, let us start analyzing these problems one by one. So, uh, for the sake of uh, once again clarity, let us uh, note down E for any element E in uh, x cross y, E a subset of x cross y, x an element in the set x and y an element y, the section E lower x is defined as all points y in y such that x comma y belongs to E. And similarly, the sec E upper y. So, whenever the point is coming from x, we will write it on the bottom E lower script x. And whenever it is coming from the set y, we will write as E uh, superscript y on the right side as all points x in x such that x comma y belongs to E. So, these we were called as the sections. So, E lower x is called the x section of E at the point x and it is a subset of y. And similarly, the y section of E or the section of E at y is a subset of x. So, that is uh, E upper y. So, the questions we would like to analyze are the following and or we want to claim that the following holds. So, uh, let us look at the some general properties of this uh, sections. The first is if E and F are subsets say that E is a subset of F, then 
the section of E at x is a subset of the section of F at x and the section of E at y is a subset of the section of F at y. So, let us uh, prove these properties before going further. So, let us verify namely, so we are given E is a subset of x and F is a subset of y. So, for x belonging to x, let us look at what is E x and we are also given that E is a subset of F. So, for any point x in x, let us look at the section E lower x. So, that is by definition all points y in y such that x comma y belongs to E. Right? Now, but so if x comma y belongs to E and E is a subset of F. So, that means uh, from here, so note, so what we are saying is note for y belonging to y, we have x comma y belongs to E that is the property here and E is a subset of F. So, x comma y belongs to F. So, that implies that y belongs to F of x also. Right? So, this is the definition of uh, e uh, f lower x namely y in y says that x comma y belongs to f. So, this implies that e lower x is a subset of f lower x. Okay? And the other property is similar. So, similarly we will have that e section at y is a subset of the section of f at y. So, these two uh, properties hold. So, that is uh, property 1. Here, we do not use uh, any effect that uh, E cross F, uh, the subsets are of in the sigma algebra E A cross B. This is true for any subsets. Uh, okay. The next property says that if we look at the difference E difference F and take its section, it is same as first taking the sections and then taking the differences, whether at a point x or at a point y. So, let us uh, analyze this uh, namely that if we E and F are subsets of x cross y. So, we are going to uh, look at the difference and the sections x is a point in x. So, let us look at the section of E minus F at the point x. So, by definition this is all points y belonging to y such that x comma y belongs to E minus f. So, what does that mean? So, that means y belonging to E minus f section implies that x comma y belongs to E minus f. But what is the meaning of saying that x comma y belongs to E so, difference f that is same as saying that x comma y belongs to E okay, belongs to E, but x comma y does not belong to f that is the meaning of this, but that is same as saying that x comma y belongs to E that means y belongs to E x and x comma y does not belong to f that means y cannot belong to the section of f at x. So, that implies that y belongs to the section of E at x, but does not belong to the section of f at x. So, that means y belongs to E x difference of f of x. So, that uh, says that E uh, lower x. So, that says that E difference f section x is a subset of E lower x difference f lower x. But notice in this all the arguments are reversible. So, supposing y belongs here. So, that is same as implying the earlier statement that y belongs to E x and y does not belong to f section at x, but that is same as saying x comma y belongs to E and x comma y does not belong to f and that is uh, same as saying that the earlier statement and that is meaning of that is implied. So, all the arguments are reversible. So, the other way around inequality also holds. So, these two sets are equal. So, it says 
that if you take the difference of E with F and then take the section at X, that is same as the taking the sections first and then taking the difference. So, that is uh, at the point X. A similar proof will work uh, for the differences at uh, if you take the difference of E with F and take the section at Y, the corresponding property says it is first taking the section and then taking the difference or the corresponding section at Y. So, basically we are saying the properties of subsets are preserved under taking sections that is a part 1 and the properties of uh, taking sections is preserved also under taking uh, differences of sets. So, whether you first take the sections and then take the difference, it is same as first taking the difference and then taking the sections. So, these are two elementary properties of the sections. Let us look at some more general properties of the sections. Once again, uh, these uh, are true for any sets, not necessarily sets in A cross B, but we will be using them only for A cross B, but they are uh, true. So, let us look at a sequence of sets, uh, uh, not a sequence, actually arbitrary family of sets E i's in X, uh, subsets of x cross y, where i is any indexing set. Then, if you look at the intersections of the sets E i's and then take the section, the claim is it is same as taking the sections first and then taking the intersections and uh, similarly at the point y. So, let us uh, section whether at x or at, at y. So, let us look at this property. So, E i's are subsets of x cross y, i belonging to some indexing set i. So, we want to uh, look at take the intersections of the sets E i. Uh, I uh, belonging to I. Okay, look at the intersections of this family E I's, and then take its section at a point X. So let us take a point X belonging to X. We want to compute and show that this is same as first take the section of every set E I at X, and then take the intersection I belonging to I. So to, to show this, let us take a point. So Y belonging to intersection. I, I in I of E i at x. So, let us take uh, a point y in this set on the left hand side. So, that is if and only if the definition says that means x comma y belongs to intersection of I in I of the sets E i. But if a point belongs to the intersection that is that means that the point belongs to each one of the sets. So, it belongs to E i for every i belonging to i. And once that is true, so that is, but the saying that x comma y belongs to e i, that is same as saying y belongs to e i x for every i belonging to i. So, y belonging to the intersection section is same as um, y belonging to uh, intersections, right. So, for every i, that means y belongs to intersections of the sections of E i at x i belonging to i. So, that proves that this property is uh, true. So, what we have shown is that this property is true, okay, namely for any arbitrary family of subsets of x cross y, if you take the intersections of these sets and then take the section at a point x, it is same as first taking the sections and then taking the intersection of those sections. So, this is uh, at a point x in x, a similar proof will work uh, for the sections at y. Namely, for every y in y, the section of the intersection is same as intersection of the sections. A corresponding result also is true for the unions. So, let us uh, prove that also. Uh, once again, the proofs are uh, similar in all these cases is only a matter of is pure set theory actually. So, what we want to do is E i's are subsets of x cross y, where i belongs to i. So, what we want to do is we want to look at the union of these sets E i, i belonging to i and then it take its section at a point x. So, let us take a point x in x. We want to show this is same as for each one of the E i's take the section x at a point x, okay, that x we have fixed 
and then take its union over i belonging to y. So, section of the unions is equal to union of the sections. So, that is what we want to prove. So, to prove that, so note, so y belong to the left hand side of the set. So, that is i belonging to i union E i and its section at x, but y belonging to the section at a point x is same as saying that the point x y belongs to the union of E i is i belonging to i, but the definition of saying that a point belongs to the union means at least it should belong to one of them. So, x comma y belongs to E i for some i belonging to i, but that is same as saying x y belongs to E i that means y belongs to the section E i at x for some i, but that is same as saying it belongs to the union. So, it belongs to at least one of the sections of E i is that means y belongs to union i belonging to i of E i at the point x. So, y belonging to the section of the union if and only if y belongs to union of the sections. So, that proves uh, that this property is true namely section of the unions is union of the sections at a point x in x and a similar property holds a section of the unions at a point y in y. So, basically what we are saying is all the set theoretic operations behave nicely with respect to taking uh, sections and this is true for all uh, subsets uh, E i is uh, of x cross y. So, now using these properties we will uh, prove namely if E is a set in the product sigma algebra A times B and x and y are elements x is in x and y is in y, then the claim is that the section E x belongs to B and the section E y belongs to A. So, that means for every x in x look at the subset of y which is the section of E at a point x that belongs to the sigma algebra on B whenever E is element in the product sigma algebra and similarly, the section at y is a subset of x and our claim is that this belongs to the sigma algebra A. So, these are the two properties we want to check for every set E belonging to A cross B. Now, uh, here is the technique of proving all these results uh, in the product sigma algebra. Basically, uh, we will apply the monotone class sigma algebra techniques. Namely, we will whenever we want to show a property holds for uh, A cross B elements in A cross B, we will collect together all subsets for which this property is true and try to show that uh, we will uh, collect sets uh, for which this property is true in uh, A times B and show that that collection includes rectangles and this collection is a sigma algebra. So, once this collection is a sigma algebra and it includes rectangles, it will include the product sigma algebra A times B. So, that is what uh, I had called as the sigma algebra technique. So, we will apply that technique here. So, let us define the collection uh, uh, S to be all subsets in A times B such that this property uh, which we are calling as star. So, E x the section at x belongs to the sigma algebra B and the section at uh, y belongs to the sigma algebra A. So, what we want to prove? We want to prove that this S is equal to A times B. So, to prove that S is equal to A times B, we will prove two things namely S is a sigma algebra and it includes rectangles and that will prove that it it actually is equal to A times B. So, let us uh, prove these properties. So, what we are given is we are given that the set E belongs to the sigma algebra. So, set E belongs to the sigma algebra A times B. So, let us so S is the collection of all the subsets E belonging to A cross B such that the section E x belongs to B and the section E y 
belongs to the sigma algebra A. So, to show S is A equal to A product sigma algebra B. Note it is already a subset of uh, A cross B. So, we will follow two things. One, so let us check the properties of this. The first is the rectangles are inside S. So, to check this property, let us take a rectangle. So, let A belong to A and B belong to B and let us take the rectangle E which is equal to A cross B. So, if you recall, we had calculated what is the section of E at x. So, that is all y belonging to y say that x comma y belongs to b, uh, x comma y belongs to sorry a cross a cross b. So, now x comma y can belong to a cross b only when x belongs to a and in that case y should belong to b. So, this set is equal to, so if x belongs to a, so for all x belonging to a, this set is equal to b. So, the section is equal to b if x belongs to a and if x does not belong to a, then in no way x comma y is going to belong to. So, this is empty set if x does not belong to a. So, for a rectangle, we have already seen, I am repeating the steps which we have done earlier, namely for a rectangle a cross b, the x section is either b or empty set. So, in either case, this belongs to the sigma algebra b. So, the property that E x belongs to b is true. A similar argument will show that E y also belongs to a. So, this proves that the rectangles are inside the sigma algebra s. So, the next step we want to check is the following. So, second step we want to check is that this collection S, S is a sigma algebra. So, this is what we want to check. So, for that the first property you look at uh, the empty set, the sections of the empty set either x section is same as the section y and that is empty set and that uh, belongs to both A and B. Okay. And similarly, if I uh, look at uh, the whole space that is x cross y, that is actually a rectangle which is inside A cross uh, A times B. Uh, sorry, which is A times B and all already rectangles are inside S. So, both the whole space and the empty set are inside S in A and B and uh, hence uh, it is also a rectangle. So, actually we should say that this belongs to a rectangle and which is part of S. So, empty set and the whole space both belong to S. The next property, let us take a set E belonging to S and show that its complement also belongs to it, but E belongs to S implies the sections E x belong to A uh, sorry E x belongs to B and E y belongs to A right that is the definition of S. So, let us just recall. So, what was the definition of the set S? The definition of the set S is all subsets A cross B so that E x belongs to B and E y belongs to A. So, by the definition this is true, but E x belongs to B and B is a sigma algebra, E y belongs to A and A is a sigma algebra. So, that implies that E x complement belongs to B and E y complement belongs to A, because of the properties of sigma algebras that A and B are both sigma algebras. So, they must be closed under complements, but on the other hand this set taking section and the complement as now we just now we observed it is same as I can take the complement first and then take the section. So, that should belong to P and similarly here the uh, section Y and then complement is same as taking the complement first and then taking the section that should belong to A. So, this set is same as this. So, for every set E in S if I look at the E complete set E complement, its section at x belongs to B and its section at uh, y sorry this is 
E complement. So, uh, at y belongs to A. So, that implies that E complement also belongs to S. So, S is closed under taking complements. And finally, to show it is a sigma algebra, I have to show it is also closed under say countable unions. So, to show that, so let E i's belong to S, say S bigger than or equal to 1. Okay. But each E i belonging to S implies, so for every i, E i belongs to S implies that E i section at x is in the sigma algebra B and E i section at y belongs to the sigma algebra A. So, this property is true, but once again A and B both are sigma algebras. So, that implies that the union of E i's sections at x i equal to 1 to infinity belongs to B and similarly, the corresponding one the union i equal to 1 to infinity of E i's section at y belongs to A. So, this uh, is true, but that implies by the fact that this set taking the sections and taking a union is same as first taking the unions and then taking the sections. Just now, we observed that. So, that belongs to the sigma algebra B and similarly, this set first taking the first taking uh, sorry this was E i is at y okay, because union belongs to A. So, that is same as now I can write as the same as union 1 to infinity of E i is at section at y belongs to A. So, that implies that union of the set union of E i is its section at x belongs to B and its section at y belongs to A that means, this belongs to the uh, collection S. So, that proves, so hence S is a sigma algebra. So, S is a sigma algebra and we know that rectangles are inside S. So, that implies that A cross B is inside S. S is a subset of already A times B. So, all these are equal. That means, the property that for every set in the product uh, sigma algebra. So, this property that for every set in the product sigma algebra, the x section belongs to B and the y section belongs to A is true. So, uh, let me once again uh, emphasize the fact that we are uh, looking at uh, these proofs, which are nothing but uh, application of the technique called the sigma algebra technique. So, now let us go to the next uh, property namely we want to check the property that we already know that for every x E x is a section of E at x. So, if E is in the product sigma algebra this set E lower x E section of E at x is in the sigma algebra B. So, nu of that set makes sense because nu is defined on the sigma algebra B and similarly, uh, the section of E at y is in the sigma algebra A. So, measure of uh, this section uh, mu of this section makes sense, but both nu of E x depends on x and mu of E y depends on y. So, this gives us two functions x going to nu of E x and y going to nu of E y. The first one is a function on the uh, set x and the second one is a function on the set y. So, we want to uh, prove that both of these are measurable functions and clearly these are non-negative functions. So, they are non-negative measurable functions on x and y. So, their integrals make sense uh, with respect to this is a function on x. So, its integral with respect to mu makes sense and this is a non-negative measurable function with respect to y. So, its uh, integral with respect to the measure nu makes sense. So, we want to claim that the integral of the first function with respect to mu is same as the product measure of the set E and which is same as the integral of the second function with respect to nu. So, that will uh, give us a nice way of computing the product uh, measure namely the product measure of a set E can be computed 
either by taking its sections with respect to x, finding the size of those sections that is a new measure of the sections with respect to x and then summing it up that is taking integrals with respect to mu or we can interchange the roles of x and y. We can take the sections of E with respect to y first, take its measures with respect to mu and then add up. So, take integrals with respect to nu. So, we want to prove that this property 2 and property 3 hold for every subset E of uh, product sigma algebra A cross B. So, once again this uh, proof is going to be a, an application of um, the sigma algebra monotone class technique and uh, you will see uh, how effective these techniques are. So, what we will do? We will collect together all the subsets of A cross B for which these two properties are true and we will try to show rectangles are inside it and hence everything is inside it. So, let us look at uh, let us look at the collection P of uh, subsets uh, of E cross elements in A cross B, so that property 2 and 3 both hold. So, what is going to be our technique? So, what is the problem to be proved? So, the problem is to show that this P is equal to A times B. So, to show that we will do the following. First, we will show that rectangles are inside A cross B. So, that is one that the set of all rectangles are inside the class this collection P and we will show the second step namely this collection P is closed under finite disjoint unions. So, what will that prove? You recall we had shown that R is a sigma algebra and if the collection P which includes R is closed under finite disjoint unions that means, finite disjoint unions of elements of the rectangles also will be inside P, but finite disjoint union of rectangles so, is nothing but the algebra generated by this semi algebra R. So, that will prove. So, this step will imply that the algebra generated by the rectangles is inside the class P. So, this first step is to conclude that the algebra generated by rectangles is inside P and the method is to show that R is inside it and uh, f of R. So, and it is closed under finite disjoint unions. So, let us prove this step 1 first. So, we have got the collection P. So, P is the collection of all subsets E belonging to A times B such that those two properties hold. So, what are the two properties? The properties were that x going to going to nu of E x and y going to mu of E y. These two are measurable functions and that the integral of nu E x with respect to mu is same as integral of mu E y with respect to d nu. So, this is over x and this is over y and both of them are equal to the product sigma algebra namely mu cross nu of E. So, E is essentially what we are saying is we are looking at the sets E in the product sigma algebra for which the required properties uh, hold. So, we want to show. So, the first thing is we want to show that rectangles are inside P. Okay. So, let us take. So, to prove this, let us take a rectangle E. So, E is equal to A cross B, right, where A belongs to the sigma algebra A and B belongs to the sigma algebra B. So, let us look at, uh, we recall what was the sections? The section E x was equal to uh, empty set if x does not belong to A and it is equal to B if x belongs to B. So, that means, this E x is nothing but when x does not belong to A, it is empty set. So, what is going to be new of that? That is going to be 0. E x is going to be uh, the set B. So, it is going to be, so it is new of B 
into the indicator function of a at x. So, this is uh, this is what is uh, important that for a rectangle a cross b, we have already computed the sections x section was empty set if x does not belong to a and it is b if x belongs to b. So, nu of e x uh, sorry nu of e x is going to be nu of empty set which is 0 if x does not belong to a and if x belongs to uh, if sorry if x belongs to a. So, this should be x belongs to a. So, if x belongs to a then it is nu of b and here uh, nu of a is 1. So, this uh, equality hold because if x belongs to a this value is 1 and indicator function of a at x x does not belong to a is 0. So, we have got this uh, equation namely nu of e x which we want to show is measurable is nothing but the indicator function constant times the indicator function of a set in the uh, sigma algebra a is in the sigma algebra. So, that implies that x going to nu of e x is a measurable. So, this is a measurable uh, function and similarly uh, if we take uh, the corresponding section with respect to y. So, let us write that, that also. So, if you look at e of y. So, that is uh, so we are writing it up actually. So, let me write uh, follow the same notation the section of e at y. So, e superscript y is equal to it is empty set if x does not belong to a and it is equal to a I am sorry let me uh, write it properly. So, the section e y is equal to empty set if y does not belong to b and it is a if y belongs to the set b because y is a point in x. So, that means that mu of e y is going to be equal to mu of the set a times the indicator function of the set b at a point at the point y. So, as a function of y it is just the indicator function of the set b at the point y multiplied by a constant. So, that will imply that y going to mu of e y is b measurable. So, that uh, proves the first thing namely the rectangle to wanted to show that rectangles are inside. So, what we have shown here for a rectangle the first property namely x going to nu of e x and y going to nu y are measurable with respect to the corresponding sigma algebras. And let us compute the integrals of these things. Okay. So, so nu of e x is this function. So, what is its integral with respect to mu? This is a constant and this is an indicator function. So, it is nu of b into mu of a. So, from this equation star, so let us write that from the equation star it follows. So, from star integral of nu of e x d of, so this is the property star okay, d of mu x is equal to so is integral of this quantity. So, that is nu of b times mu of a. So, that was the property uh, star and similarly let us look at the uh, integral of the other function. So, we want to compute integral of uh, the function mu of e y. So, but mu of e y is equal to this quantity. So, let us call, call it as double star. So, once we integrate this what we will get is integral of mu of e y with respect to y d nu y is equal to mu of a into nu of b. So, from the equation double star we will have integral mu of e y d nu of y is equal to mu of a into nu of uh, nu of b. So, in either case these integrals are which is nothing but the product. So, that says, so this is equal to the product sigma algebra uh, product measure mu cross nu of the rectangle a cross b and similarly here this is the uh, product mu cross nu of a times b. So, this proves, so hence what we have shown is that rectangles are inside 
the collection P of the sets for which we wanted to prove the required claim holds. So, what was the second step we wanted to prove? We want to prove that this collection R P, so claim, so the second collection. So, here is the second thing in the step 1. So, we have proved part of the step 1, namely we have proved that P includes R, P includes rectangles. So, the next part of the proof requires us to show that P is closed under finite disjoint unions. So, let us prove that. So, P is closed under finite disjoint unions. So, for that, so let us take two sets E and F which belong to P, uh, which belong to the collection P, right. So, that means what? So, that implies that for E and F the corresponding results are true okay? and E and F are disjoint that is also given to us intersection is equal to empty. So, to show, so the, we want to show that E union F belongs to P. So, that is what we want to show. So, let us start with looking at the sections of E union F, its section at a point x by the definition uh, properties of the sections, the section of the union is union of the sections. So, it is union of E x union of F x. Right. So, what is going to be, uh, these are the sections. Okay. So, what is going to be nu of the union E union F section. So, what is the nu of that? So, that is now as E and F are disjoint, these sections are going to be a disjoint. So, it is nu of the disjoint union of the sections E x union F of x. And these being disjoint, so that means this is equal to nu of E x plus nu of F x. It is nu of E x plus F of x. So, here is uh, something for you to think and confirm that if E and F are disjoint sets, then their corresponding sections are also disjoint and hence this property is true. Now, E and F both belong to P that means, this is a measurable function of x and this is also a measurable functions of x and we have proved that sum of measurable functions is measurable. So, this will imply that x going to nu of E union F section at x is a measurable. So, this is a measurable function. Similarly, y going to nu of uh, mu of E union F section y is b measurable. So, to check that P is closed under finite disjoint unions, we have checked the first property namely if E and F are two disjoint sets in P, then x going to nu of E union F section and uh, y going to mu of the section E union F at y are both respectively measurable functions. Now, let us check the next property namely that the integral property is true for the union. So, for that what we want to do is the following. So, we want to integrate. So, let us integrate nu of E union F section. This is a measurable function. So, with respect to mu we can integrate this. So, this over the set x of course, this we know by the just now we proved that the nu of. So, here is nu of uh, E union x E union f at x is nu of E x plus nu of f of x. So, let us use that property and so this we can write as x. So, the integrand nu of E union f of x is equal to nu of E x plus nu of f of x d mu x. So, now by the pro using the properties of the integral, this we can split it as integral over x of nu E x d mu x plus integral over x of nu of f of x with respect to d mu x. 
Now, because E and F both are inside the class inside the collection P for which this property integral of the section nu E x d mu x is nothing but mu cross nu of E and the second integral is nothing but mu cross nu of F. And now, by the fact that E and F are disjoint and mu cross nu is a measure, this is nothing but mu cross nu of E union F. So, what we have shown is that if I integrate nu of E union F section with respect to mu, that is the product measure of the set E union F. A corresponding result will also hold when I take y sections, namely we can show that integral of mu E union F at y. So, similarly, so let me just write the argument that the corresponding result will be similar. So, similarly, if I uh, integrate over y and mu of E union F section at y d nu of y. So, if I take the section of uh, E union F with respect to y, take its mu measure. So, that is a measurable function and its integral with respect to nu that we just now we observed that this section is nothing but mu of E y plus mu of F y and that was because this section E union F section is same as E section union F section and they are disjoint. So, measures add up and that is equal to d of nu y and now once again as before we can write this as uh, mu cross nu of E plus mu cross nu of F and by again using the property of uh, that mu cross nu is a measure E and F are disjoint. This is mu cross nu of E union F. So, that proves the second part of the property namely that not only P includes rectangles, in fact P is uh, closed under finite disjoint unions. So, as a consequence of this uh, because finite disjoint union of elements of a semi algebra give us the algebra generated by uh, that semi algebra. So, as a consequence of step 1 we have gotten that the algebra generated by rectangles is inside the class P, where F r is the algebra generated by rectangles. So, now, so our next step should be that trying to show that this P is actually a, a sigma algebra, but once more one tries to do that, one tries to show that uh, P is a, a sigma algebra, one lands into problem, uh, one is not able to show. Uh, that uh, it is closed under uh, arbitrary uh, unions. So, uh, that will be a problem. So, one uh, modifies the arguments and in, so instead of showing that uh, P is a uh, sigma algebra, one tries to show that P actually is at least a monotone class. So, once one tries to show that P is a monotone class, it includes an algebra. So, it will include the monotone class generated by the algebra which is the sigma algebra. So, that is a route we will follow. So, from here onwards our technique will be the monotone class uh, technique. So, we will try to show that P is a monotone class. So, it will include the monotone class generated by the algebra f of r which is same as the sigma algebra generated by r and that will complete the proof. So, the second step we will do it in the next lecture. So, today's lecture we have just concluded that the class P for which we want to prove the required claim holds includes the algebra generated by rectangles. So, we will continue the proof in the next lecture. Thank you.